A new study involving more than a thousand firefighters showing the most effective ways they can actually lower their PFAS levels. Those are also known as forever chemicals, mm -hmm. and those are the chemicals that can cause cancer. Our Troy Lynch is live in the studio with us, and Troy, you spoke with the lead researcher and those you know, he helped, I guess, with this study, get the firefighters hopefully healthier in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks to a grant from the Arizona Board of Regents, Arizona scientists were able to find these were some of the best ways to lower their PFAS levels for firefighters. So it starts with washing their gear when they're on site. That lowers PFAS by 24%. Drinking bottled water instead of tap water at the station, that lowers PFAS levels by up to 20%. Washing your gear prior to storing it. Also, have the fire station install a reverse osmosis water filter and then also get rid of carpet. This study has found that carpet in fire station living quarters increases PFAS levels by 26%. But one of the most effective ways is for firefighters to donate blood and plasma. And this is music to firefighters' ears. It's hard. It's hard to hear you, you have cancer. Um, especially when you have a family. June 2nd, 2015, Goodyear firefighter Gilbert Aguirre got the news that he had chronic myeloid leukemia, a type of cancer that affects the blood and bone marrow. Officially, I've been off of my chemo uh, medication uh, for three years now. But firefighters protecting the community while battling cancer is more normal than you think. When I was diagnosed, I realized how many more other firefighters were diagnosed. International Agency for Research on Cancer has identified firefighting as an occupation as a group one carcinogen, which is right up there with formaldehyde, gamma radiation, asbestos, and all sorts of other obviously toxic chemicals. Godfrey says that two thirds of firefighter deaths are a result of occupational cancer. 25 years ago, I knew nothing about carcinogens and how they would affect us and how I would develop a cancer. From it. A two and a half year study from the University of Arizona and Arizona Board of Regents used about a thousand Arizona firefighters and a thousand others out of state to predict what is causing elevated levels of PFAS and how to lower it. We're now at an intersection of, of not only understanding the problem, but finally being able to do something about it. Some of the ways the study shows that PFAS can be reduced are drinking bottled water instead of water at the station and washing down the gear before it's taken off when coming back from a call. But perhaps the most interesting is how firefighters can donate blood or plasma and it will reduce their PFAS levels. By donating our blood, we're able to reduce those PFAS levels and provide blood and plasma to the general public. But wouldn't blood that has PFAS in it not be healthy to somebody else who needs blood actually no. For a single donation, it's, it's very little for anyone who gets it. So the benefits of getting the blood and plasma products is much higher than the, the potential risk of a small amount of additional PFOS. Dr. Jeff Burgess is the head researcher on this study and has been working on firefighter research for over 30 years. He says everyone has a measurable amount of PFAS in their blood, but firefighters have elevated levels as they are 14% higher risk of dying from cancer than the general U.S. population. We're going to keep fighting it every single day. Now, the official results will be published in the near future, but they wanted to get this information to fire departments so they can make changes and provide a safer work environment as soon as they possibly can. We're live here in the studio. Troy Lynch, 12 News, Today in AZ.